Three is a powerful number in magic and in mathematics, and three is what we're talking about here this morning because Dr. Clausen's was the first in a package we're calling deliverables about vision, about muscular dystrophy, and about leukemia, and three deliverables coming from UCLA, UCI, and the UCSD Alpha Clinic. And the patient he spoke of is going to join us next because she is the example of what makes this all personal. She's what the research, the money, all the inspiration, and all the perspiration are about. Because Kristen McDonald is part of that clinical trial for retinitis pigmentosa, and thanks to that, for the first time in 10 years, she is seeing Goethe's last words, our first words, more light. She likes to say that although her vision, her eyesight is poor, her vision is perfect. And she's the perfect storyteller to tell you all about it. Kristen McDonald. Thank you. I'm very delighted to be here today, and a special thanks to Dr. Henry Clausen, because if it weren't for him, I'd be, I'd have a very different story to tell today. You know, there are some benefits to losing your eyesight, and one of them is I never get stage fright because I can't see any of you. <laughs> Seriously. Before I begin and tell you about my experience with stem cell therapy, I would like to share a little bit about my life first because I feel it's very important for you as a scientist or a doctor or professional to learn about the patient from, from their perspective because the mind, body, and spirit go together. And the effect that, that a devastating diagnosis, diagnosis rather has on someone is very pertinent today. When I was in my mid-20s, I started tripping and falling because my night vision was starting to go. And at this time, I had a beautiful dream of becoming an actress and a television host in Hollywood. And I prepared for it. I studied in Manhattan, and I worked in TV production during the day, and I longed for this dream. And I soon moved to the West Coast and landed an agent, had a little red sports car that I used to drive on the 405, and life was pretty much my oyster. I'm sure that many of you can relate to that at that age when you have a plan and a first vision of your life and you hope to become a doctor, a scientist, you hope to marry a certain person, uh, you hope to graduate from a certain school, but life doesn't always turn out that way. Sometimes life has a different plan for us in store. So after a couple of years, after the second broken arm, I ended up at the eye doctors and only to discover that I either had a brain tumor or a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. And if you can pronounce that, you won a prize because I had never heard of it. And I remember walking out of the eye doctor that day and getting into my car and you know, hearing this, this, these loud screams while I was driving down Hollywood Boulevard because I was so devastated and I, I had no idea where the screams were coming from until I realized they were coming out of my mouth because I was so terrified that my, my wonderful plan for my life was just going to go downhill you know, with this horrible diagnosis. And I was pretty much new to Los Angeles at that time. So this diagnosis was compounded by the fact that the doctor lacked bedside manner and he told me in no uncertain words that I should buck up and pretty much deal the deck that life had dealt me You know, once I started to cry in his office. I did learn to deal with that deck of cards, but it didn't happen overnight, and it took the gentle coaxing of a wonderful ophthalmologist at Jules Stein and another terrific uh, psychologist to get me out of my, my funk. Dealing with loss is, is a big challenge, especially when you can't see well. You know, the loss of, of giving up my car was paramount. And I think giving up my bicycle was even more difficult because I'm very athletic and I rode horses from the time I was seven years old. And, and all of that was very heartbreaking to me. 
that I had to suddenly, all your social activities and everything you once, you know, you did with ease just became so difficult. You know, let me describe what having RP is like. It's kind of like looking at a beautiful Monet painting and over time the brush strokes fade, the colors fade, the, the people that you love in that photograph or, or painting fade and suddenly it becomes a dimmer and dimmer circle of light as Dr. Clausen was explaining. The peripheral vision goes first and it's kind of like a blurry donut shape, you know, with a, a central tunnel in the center and then a, a big donut shape with um, the center of the donut with a lot of little tunnels and over time it all fades and you have lots of little tunnels and one in the center and it's, it's, it's very, very disheartening to see everything in front of you that you once loved suddenly disappear. So learning to deal with loss was a big job. I gave into the white cane after falling down a flight of, heads, a flight of stairs head first, and that was the, at the Academy of Television Arts and Scientists, mind you, right where I wanted to make a big splash <laughs> one day. And, and I remember, you know, even trying to practice the cane one day, walking down Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles and hearing this voice scream out, look out, here comes a blind person. And I was so devastated and affronted by these words, especially when I, I discovered he was talking about me, that I, I was crushed and devastated that day. And that was one of many days that I decided that I had to change my thoughts and maybe my world would change. And with that, I picked myself up and I learned mobility training, and I want to thank the state of California and the Center for the Partially Sighted for all the help that they gave me because I wouldn't be standing here today without them. You know, I learned how to organize my life and to cook when I couldn't see and, and learn how to do everything on audio, literally. But I never gave up hope for stem cell. And that's why I'm so delighted to be here today to tell you about my recent progress. Uh, my first injection was June of 2015, so it's almost two years in June this year. And that injection was uh, in my left eye, which was formerly my bad eye. And when I stare at this light right here, this bright light, this was the injected eye. And I can tell you that this eye has so much more light perception than the right eye which was recently injected, and I, I can't give you a full progress report on that yet because it takes a few months for these little critters to get back to the rods and cone and, uh, and show some improvement. But, you know, light is truly important for a partially sighted person because it helps you to see part of a car, part of a cabinet, and trust me, I've hit my head so many times, I think I was a stunt woman in a former life. <laughs> It's amazing, my nose is still sitting on my face and my head on my shoulders. Um, you know, light is, is huge. I mean, it may not sound like a huge deal to you that I still can't see your face or read a book or see on a computer, but if someone were dimming the lights in your house for 25 plus years and suddenly they were going on, I think you'd be elated as I am. And you know, the meaning of light is meant to illuminate all of us. It's, it's meant to make us brighter, um, to pick up our world, and, and just, um, this, this light to me is truly a light at the end of the tunnel. And I, I do feel like a California lottery winner as a result of it. And I, I've been very humbled to be an ambassador for Americans for Cures and meet other patients with similar and, and other life-threatening conditions such as you know, cancer, Hodgkin's, Huntington's disease, uh, sickle cell. Uh, the other day I met a gentleman who is the first person to have been cured of AIDS in the world. How fantastic is that, thanks to stem cell therapy. I was so inspired by Timothy Brown's story. And you know, many people when they receive a diagnosis of blindness, they go into something that I call mental darkness, which is something so sad. I, I, I have a friend whose brother had lost his eyesight and I've reached out multiple times and yet his life has spiraled downhill because everything he once loved to do is so difficult. He lost his job, he lost his marriage as a result of it, he can't function in, in even the smallest way. And that's something I promised myself I never, I never wanted to be in that state of mind and that's why when I was struggling with this condition, I created something called Second Vision, 
which was basically a set of tools in my back pocket, attitude skills, acceptance, appreciation, and the right action towards your desired goal. And that second vision led me to where I am here today. And I believe that it drew all the wonderful people into my life to help me to my desired goal to see again, hopefully by 2020. No pressure, Dr. Clausen. No. <laughs> I know we all want that. You know, I, I want to tell you that I have the utmost gratitude in my heart for the kind of work that you as a scientist and professional and all the people collectively in this room are working towards a goal, you know, of curing medical disease and conditions with stem cell. And I, I ask you, if you do a little exercise when you go home tonight or tomorrow, a gratitude exercise that I practice, I, I shut my eyes and I pretend that I'm deaf because Helen Keller had a much harder time than me. And there's actually a condition called Usher syndrome with RP that uh, causes you to go deaf. And I just ask you to shut your eyes tonight or tomorrow morning and ask yourself what it would be like if you couldn't see. How would you get up? How would you get dressed? How would you make your breakfast? How would you get to work? How would you read your emails? How would you live out the dream that you had once had for yourself? And I have a dream, as Helen Keller had a dream, and that is to fulfill the wish that my beautiful mother had for me, who just passed at Christmas. And her last words to me were, honey, keep shining your light, and you will see again. And I have to believe that. And she had hope, and she knew that I was gonna get my second injection of stem cell therapy in January. Unlike my dad, who died of cancer 20 years ago, who was a physician, and didn't have any hope for the disease, who was crushed that he couldn't help me. So I want to leave you with something today. And first, I'd like to give my, my Oscar a round of thank yous. And that is to CERN for all their incredible work with the scientists and the honor of being in one of their studies. To Americans for Cures for the honor of being an ambassador, and particularly Bob Klein to start the ball rolling. To City of Hope for hosting this event. And I want to leave you with this today. Never give up hope. Be happy if you have a piece of your dream, because with hope we have purpose, and purpose is everything.